Okay, so already looks like we have some students joining us. Great. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to wait just another minute or two here before we kind of begin with today's session. We want to make sure we have all of our students. Uh, feel free to go grab a glass of water or a snack real quick while we wait. Um, it's going to be a very exciting session, hopefully, and hopefully you all have lots of questions about all things campus recreation. Uh, but again, we're going to wait just a couple of minutes here. Make all of our students that are interested in joining us today before we kind of go ahead and get started. Um, it already looks like we have a, a good number of students. So thank you all for spending a bit of your Friday afternoon with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure you all had very long weeks at school and a very long day. So we appreciate the time that you're willing to spend with William and Mary. Um, again, gonna wait just a minute or two here before we kind of formally get started. Let's see. Just so everyone is aware, and I'll say this again later, um, we are going to be using that Q&A feature down below. So if you have questions, if you have comments or concerns or anything uh, along those lines, make sure you're putting it down in the Q&A. Uh, if you put it in the chat, we will not be able to see it. Uh, so again, just make sure you're using that Q&A function. Let's see. All righty. Looks like our, our student participants have slowed down a bit. We might have gotten the bulk of our, our uh, attendees for today. Uh, so with that being said, I'll kind of formally introduce myself. My name is Christian Burnett. I am an Assistant Dean of Admission here at William & Mary. Uh, and I will let my, my co-presenter here introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Linda Knight. I am Executive Director for Health and Wellness and also Director of Campus Recreation. Um, and I will be telling you everything I know about recreation here. And then hopefully you'll have some questions. Um, I'll leave a fair amount of time at the end just so you can ask questions, because that's really what's important is that you get you get what you want out of this. So I'll share some information and then we'll, we'll open it up to you guys to ask and I'll be able to answer those for you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time as well. We know it's been a long week for you all. Um, but with that being said, so we will be sharing our screens partially during the presentation. So if you see a blackout screen for a second, don't worry. Uh, we're still here. It's just that switch over. Uh, but again, don't be afraid to put any and all questions down in that Q&A box down below. Um, that's really what's going to drive the conversation later on. With that being said, it, it looks like we have most of our attendees for today or what we might have for now. Uh, so I will go ahead and turn it over to Linda to kind of explain and introduce everyone to campus recreation. Sure. So I am going to start by sharing my screen and make sure it works for me because it doesn't always. I'm a great recreation director. I'm not necessarily great in technology. So um, hopefully you can see the, our, our home screen here. Um, but so I, I just want to I want to talk to you a little bit about who we are and what we do and kind of and everything along that lines. And then again, I will open that up um, for questions. But what's what's really important for you to understand when we talk about campus recreation, we are basically most activity um, that's exercise or wellness related that doesn't fall under varsity athletics. So if it's not NCAA, it is probably us. Um, but we'll go through all of it. And uh, I would also like to say, you know, welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm standing up in front of you, there's usually a, a pretty large crowd. And, you know, I what I hope is that um, that William and Mary is for you. But if it's not that then understand it's not for everybody. So this is a this is an important time for you to look around and see and it's hard when you can't actually do on campus tours or anything but um, we're all here to answer any questions you have and you'll you'll get our website at the end. If you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, it's a big decision and it's an important decision for you. This is the four years or five years that you really get to kind of experience things and do the things that are really important to you. And, and that should be a, a, an important choice for you. Um, one of the things that I love most about William and Mary, uh, and I've been here 21 years now, um, but one of the things I love most is that you know, at a, at a lot of private institutions, I mean, I mean, you're going to come to William & Mary and nobody's going to worry about, am I going to get a, get a good education? That's what William & Mary is known for. We're known for being a highly academic school, a great academic school. But what I love most about William & Mary is that for a public institution, we take care of our students 
better than any other public institution I've ever been around outside the classroom. So you already know you're going to get the inside the classroom piece. You're going to get the academics. Nobody's worried. But then what happens when you leave class? How do, we, how, how, how do we take care of you? Do we provide activities for you? Are there opportunities for you? Are there organizations to, organizations to join? And the answer is yes. And we really do. And when it comes to health and wellness, um, we've got a brand new facility around health and wellness. And it was a priority for the university. So they built it before. They built a lot of buildings that were ahead of them. Um, because we value your wellness and we value your health. Um, and so, so everything that we do through campus recreation is really just to help support those, those initiatives around your health and wellness. So, so the first thing is, also, this, is the, this is the student, uh, the, now it's called the B. McLeod Recreation Center. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit in a, little, in a second, but um, this is our mission. You know, we just wanna provide quality recreational opportunities to all members of the William & Mary community and enhance and foster a lifelong appreciation for health, wellness, and recreation. Now, we still do, we, we offer things for faculty and staff also. Um, we're fortunate enough to be able to do that because my philosophy is, is if your faculty and staff are happy and healthy, then your, your experience here is gonna be better. So I feel like I'm serving you all by making them healthier also. But our priority will always be our students. That, that is why we're here. That's why we do everything we do. Um, you, you all, we, when people ask me who my boss is, I say, I got about 7,000 of them. Um, you know, so you all are our student. I mean, you all are, are the people that we're here to serve. So William and Mary kind of focuses all of their health and wellness programs around the eight dimensions of wellness. Um, we, campus recreation falls under the umbrella of health and wellness. And so it is campus recreation, the health center, the counseling center, and the health promotion specialist in the Center for Authentic Excellence. So all that falls under one umbrella. And it, what's nice about that is we all work together. So if, you know, if, if we see a student that looks like they're struggling through in, in one of our programs, we can very easily reach out to somebody in the health center or in the counseling center and say, hey, can you help us out with this person? They're having a little bit of an issue. Or if somebody goes to see one of the doctors and they don't necessarily need, you know, a prescription, he can, you know, one of the docs can turn around and say, hey, you know, you don't need a prescription, but we've got a yoga class going on downstairs right now, and you can just go take it. So we support each other that way, and that's that's something that you're not going to find a lot of places, um, but we're very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, and campus recreation also is one of the one of the only areas that can reach all eight dimensions of, of wellness, um, and it's just by the nature of what we do. You know, we when you look at something that says financial, we hire over 300 students to work with us. So that certainly helps financially. You all will be able to afford whatever it is that you want your spending money to go towards or whatever. Um, we're a big part of that. So um, indoor facilities, these are our two major facilities. Most of what we do is in the B. McLeod Recreation Center. And um, that has just recently been renamed. That will actually, We'll have a in, in next fall. We will actually have a dedication where we where we change the name of it. Um, and then you see, there's also the McLeod Tyler Wellness Center. So you're starting to see a pattern in some names. Um, the, these B McLeod and Goody Tyler have given multi millions of dollars to help support students' wellness and in, in, in recreation. Um, and so. Whenever they give one of their donations, their first and, and major question is, how is it gonna help the students and how is it gonna help the students with their wellness? And so they were, they were instrumental in building the McLeod Tyler Wellness Center and then um, have given many donations to campus recreation. And unfortunately, just a little bit over a year ago, we lost B. McLeod suddenly, um, she passed on and, you know, Goody, Goody Tyler has continued to give, but we really wanted to honor her for everything she has always done. She's an alumni of the, of the college um, and has always been supportive. So we, we renamed our facility after her. But just a little bit more about what's inside. So here's some other facilities that we use. Adair Hall is another facility on campus. It has a gym, it has a pool, it has different rooms in it. And we use that as kind of an overflow for our sport club programs. Um, in the near future, I think that facility will be turned over to campus recreation and that'll be an additional facility that we have to provide opportunities for you. But right now we just share it with some, some different groups. We have Bush Field and Bush Turf. 
Um, the turf is, is more of a, a field. If you've ever played field hockey, it's the really short turf, but Bush Field is an artificial grass field, but certainly it, that is 100% campus recreation and Bush Turf we share with our athletic program. So we normally when I do this, it's, it's we're sharing this time with athletics. So I, you know, I'll usually tell you a little bit about athletics, but since we're not doing it, I won't tell you a lot, but I will tell you one of the nice things about where we are here is a lot of places you go, athletics and recreation are almost arch enemies because they're all fighting for space, they're fighting for money, they're fighting for this. If we don't do that here, we are so fortunate in that we have a wonderful relationship. The varsity swim team is in our facility, that's where their varsity pool is. We share fields if we need something, they've let us have the football field for some major events. We just we just have a great relationship. So um, when we talk about some of these areas, they're sh shared fields, but the, but it's a great relationship. Intramural field is a, a natural grass field where we do a lot of our intramural programs and a lot of our sport clubs. Barksdale field is exactly the same. Um, it's a natural grass field that we were able to do both of those. And then we have the recreation tennis courts. So we also have um, the Bar the Millie West tennis courts, which are the courts that the varsity team plays on those are not open for recreation but they are open when we for our for our um, tennis sport club and they're open for our intramural tennis events so that we have access to those also a little bit about our, our rec center here um, it was expanded in 2006 and um, it, it is absolutely a gorgeous facility you would never know it's almost 15 years old because it looks brand new. Um, I'm fortunate to have an amazing team that takes great care of it and amazing students that buy into taking care of it also. So that's wonderful. We were actually the first LEED certified building on campus and LEED certified building basically means you're a green building so you're environmentally friendly, um, which was, was quite, whenever we're the probably one of the only recreation centers in the country that had, was basically a renovation that has LEED certified. So that, that was pretty impressive. So we got over 90,000 square feet um, and it's oh, we have a free weight room, we have cardio equipment and a ton of other stuff that I'll show you. Um, so here is our, our weight room. It does not look like that now. We've made some changes, we've added some equipment um, and it certainly doesn't look like that right now in the times of COVID. Um, we have had to, we've had to separate stuff. We are, we have been fortunate enough to be able to be open since August. So we never have closed. Um, we're open seven days a week. We program seven days a week. They don't look the same as they normally will, but we are able to do that. Um, and we've had to spread people out and people have had to sign up to use the rec center, but it, it's worked beautifully. And basically every two hours we're closed for 30 minutes to clean the whole building. And we do that all day, every day. So we've made it very, very safe for you, but it's also, um, it's, we, we know right now, life is very difficult for, for all of us, but certainly for our young adults, um, which what I consider you all as young adults, um, it's just not been easy for you. And, and we know how important exercise is and how important it is for you to be able to get out of your room and do different things. So we've worked really hard to make sure we've been able to stay open through all of this. Um, so we have a whole life fitness circuit. We also have a whole free weight area with hammer strength weight equipment, which is top of the line. Um, you know, it's funny when we build this, I went to our varsity athletic program and said, okay, what weights and what everything do you all have? And we bought the exact same ones because I didn't want the, the other students to feel like they were being treated differently than our varsity athletes. So the weight room looks very, I mean, we don't have as, as many of the heavy weights. We don't have some of the deadlift stuff that they have, um, but we do have the exact same type of weights and the exact same type of benches and everything. And um, it kind of created a little bit of a problem for us because then all the varsity athletes wanted to come over here because they got better time and they got better spaces, but um, it's worked out really, really well for us. But So we also have a climbing wall. It's a custom built climbing wall. Um, we've got racquetball and squash, squash courts. We have two of each. We also, we have a racquetball club and a squash club um, and they utilize those as well as, as our open rec. People use them for just free play. Uh, we have three basketball courts. That's not the picture you see. The picture you see right there is our multi-activity court. Um, we play indoor soccer down there. We play court hockey. You can just see off to the left of it. Um, you can see the team box areas. So we can actually have people in the team boxes and are able to participate in the programs. 
Um, we have two group fitness rooms. We have massage therapy and fitness assessment room. We also, and when we talk about the McLeod Tyler Wellness Center, we also have two um, massage therapy rooms over there. Our, we call them modality rooms because we also do Reiki. We do um, acupuncture. We do all kinds of stuff in those rooms. We have a pool and a sauna. This is the pool, and this is also the varsity athletic pool. Um, again, it looks a little different now because we just recently replaced all of the HVAC systems, so it's a lot better um, air ventilation in the pool, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great recreational pool. It's kind of small for a varsity pool, but the water is the same water as every other pool, so they, you know, I guess our team has a little advantage because they're used to practicing in it. Um, and Wi-Fi is available throughout the building, and that was really important to us. We didn't want the rec center to feel like your typical gym because if we, we felt like um, people that, that really, really love to work out would work out if we put them in a box. They didn't care, but we really wanted to reach the students that were, had never worked out before or had never felt comfortable in a rec center before. So we have the spaces available, and it's open, and it's welcoming, and we've had people come in and do um, they're sitting there doing group projects and they're looking over at people lifting on, on the life fitness machines and they go, wow, I could do that. And, and, and so they started working out in the facility and that was, that was our goal. And it's, it has, has worked for us. McLeod Tyler Wellness Center. This is the newest of the wellness centers. So we have our, we call, we call them all wellness centers. And, and this is a little smaller than you would think. Um, and that was intentional. We wanted it, we wanted it to be small and intimate. We we wanted our goal is for this building is to teach you about wellness and teach you how to. We don't. Our goal isn't to get rid of your stress. Our goal is to help you understand how to manage your stress because we all have stress. Let's let's be honest. If if you don't have stress, I want to be you. Um, but we all do. And so this is a great way for us to be able to. Um, kind of teach you how to take care of yourself. And then we say wellness is everywhere on campus. If you're sitting in your residence hall, you can practice wellness. If you're walking to class, you can practice wellness. When you're talking to your friends, you can talk to them about wellness. So our goal is to kind of teach you about that and then allow you to just go and, and, and kind of be our, our champions all around campus. So that's it. But it's a very nice and comfortable facility. It's got a water wall in it. It's just beautiful. Um, and it's, it's a, it's, it's only been open, I think it's in its third year right now. Um, and obviously we haven't used it as much in the last year because there's not, there's not a lot of programs going on there because some of the rooms are a little smaller. Um, I like to joke about the kind of the rec center is a place you come get your heart rate up and get you pumping and it's exciting and it's, na it's noisy and it's fun. And then when you go to the wellness center, it's where you go to get your heart rate down and get you calm and help you just kind of kind of relax a little bit. And, and, and the buildings that feel that way. I mean, you'll get that feel in that building also. A lot of students just go over there to study and look out behind in the back of the building and you can't see it through here, but in the back of the building, it's all glass and there's azaleas all bloom. It's just a beautiful, beautiful sight. Um, and there's the back. So that'll show you what that is, all the glass that's there. I um, mean, it really is that, that beautiful from behind there. This is, this is what it looks like, but that is, that is the facility and that's the programs I were was telling you about that are all under the health and wellness thematic area. And most of their offices are over there. I'm fortunate enough to have an office in both places. Um, so I'm over there part of the time and over in the rec center part of the time. And I love both of them. So that's, that's kind of a neat thing. And when we get a dare and we flip that also, then we'll have three different buildings for you to be able to kind of help you navigate your health and your wellness. Um, I put these in here because I, because I'm impressed with them and I'm proud of them. Um, I won't take too much time talking about them. And I will tell you, this is not indicative of this year because so much changed with COVID, but this is the year before um, because that was what we would call our last normal year. Um, but we are, we're open 106 hours a week, which is 106 out of 168. So we're open. You can, people can't say I can't find a time to come work out because you can. Um, we've had over 600 in a year. We get over 600,000 entries into the rec center. Uh, at our busiest days, we get about 1,300 people, which is usually January and February because we're right after New Year's resolutions. It's too nasty to go outside and do anything. And we wanna get ready for spring break. So all that falls into that. And that's why we're so busy. Um, you know, 50, or 52 hours a week for the pool for just recreation. 
Um, last year, we had 540 intramural teams in 13 sports. Some of our bigger ones, and I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. I'll get to those in a second because I'll have a page on intramural, so it's no, no use me making stuff up. So, um, you know, that the games played, we talk about outdoor fields. We have 102 student officials. Um, we have 45 registered sport clubs, which is the largest in the state of Virginia. When you compare that to, a, say, a Virginia Tech that has 30,000 students, and I can pick on, I mean, that's my, that's my, I'm an alum of Virginia Tech, so I always pick on them because I can do that and feel good about it. Um, I love Virginia Tech, so I'm not picking on them really. But the, but the fact that we have that many sport clubs is, is amazing. Um, and the participants is about 1,500 or almost 1,600 participants. Uh, and I like to say, I mean, the honest part of it is I, I have a great team and we put on a great program for you guys. But if you didn't want to participate, I don't care how good our program was, it would not be successful. So most of the I mean, it goes to you guys for being willing to get out and do things and find ways to help yourself out. But um, those numbers are a direct reflect, a reflection of the students that really want to take care of themselves. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the scope of our programs. So this is, um, we've had 1,900 students registered for FitWell memberships, 100 and personal training clients. We, we hire group fitness instructors and personal trainers and we and they're all 90% of those are students. Like I said, we hire over 300 students um, for every job imaginable. You know, you, you can be a fitness instructor, you can be a personal trainer, you can lead our outdoor trips, you can officiate, you can supervise for us. So you can, there's all kinds of positions that are out there. Um, Let's see, yep, supervisors are about 35 to 40, and those are kind of our highest level positions. Those are the ones that really, like what, what I tell our facility supervisors is if I'm in the building, you're still in charge. You tell me what to do because you're the one that I've hired to do that, and you're the one that I've empowered to do that, and you also get a leadership experience through that. If I take over all the hard situations, then you're not going to be be able to say, hey, I was a great leader. So we're, it's really important that, that those that our students feel valued and empowered to handle any situation that comes up. So here's the major programs that fall under us. Um, and each one has a little page. So we'll go to those now. So aquatics basically is the pool. Um, it's open for free swim. It's open for our swim club. Most of the, our synchronized swimming club and our water polo club swims over in a dare because we don't have a deep end here. So they need to be over there where they actually have a deep end and can do stuff. But we do hire lifeguards and we hire in, in instructors and we do an adult learn to swim program. So if you don't know how to swim, we can help you there too. Um, group fitness. This is a big one for us. Group fitness and wellness classes are free for students forever. Um, we go. Let's go back to those those names you've heard so often: B. McLeod and Goody Tyler. Their latest gift was an endowment that allows us to offer free fitness and wellness classes for students forever. So even when Linda Knight retires, because I believe in free classes. So, but even when I retire, the person that comes in after me can't change that because their endowment is set up for that to happen. So I, th I hope you all realize, you know, if you come here, that's a huge savings because we have classes, we probably, you know, we probably have upwards of 80 or 90 classes a week and all those are free for you guys. Um, and that was such a huge gift that they gave um, that's, that's gonna benefit people forever. Personal trainer, we do, we do have to charge for personal training and partially that is because we have to pay for it. We have to pay more than we can handle from the, for the instructors, but it's, it's cheaper than you can get anywhere around. Um, so we, we do offer it, but we offer it at a very reduced rate and we supplement that because we know you all are paying student fees that help keep our doors open and that's important for us to give that back to you guys. Um, so 95% of our instructors are and trainers are students. We offer a class in the fall. It's a non-credit class, but it is a how to be a group fitness instructor. And then in the spring, we offer a how to be a personal trainer. Um, our associate director in charge of fitness and wellness teaches those classes. Um, she gets you ready. You go take the national certification. You get it. And then you, you teach for us and you're a certified instructor. And even when you leave here, you're a certified instructor. And you can go do that anywhere you'd like to do it. And so that's, that's a nice nice benefit for you. Massage therapy, again, it's, um, we do charge for massage therapy, but it's cheaper than anywhere else in the world. 
um, and we offer them in, in both the rec center and we have two beautiful um, therapy rooms over in the wellness center. And those are, those are probably the preferred ones. Um, one of the downsides of, of renovating a rec center rather than just gutting it and starting all over is you have to put a massage therapy room right outside of a weight room. Not a good idea. It's never good to be doing a, you know, getting a massage in here and weights clink. So um, we put some, <laughs> put some soundproofing up, but it's still the other facilities a little bit, a little bit more conducive to quiet massages. Um, but it, it, it's, it's also, and they're great. The massage therapists are great. I get one once a month. Wellness programs. Um, so we offer some free semester fitness and wellness incentive programs. We do wellness events and we we're participate in a program called Exercise is Medicine. We partner with the health center and we do different activities to just kind of help keep you healthy versus having to go to the doctor. Um, the picture you see here is called Lake Matoka um, and that we have been using every day since COVID hit because we can offer a lot more, lot, we can offer opportunities for a lot more students and still keep people spaced apart, be outside even with your mask on. Um, and we're able to offer some some really cool classes down there. And, and what a what a great thing to be able to look out over a lake while you're doing exercise. Um, we had a, a wellness day a couple days ago where we where we did a fun run, but we also had a black light cycling class down here and a black light dance party down here. So it was it's just I mean this is just a beautiful area for us. You'll see a little bit more of it in a second when we talk about our outdoor program. Um, the university has just committed a little bit more money to us to allow us to be able to um, kind of clean up Lake Matoka a little bit and make it like a destination area where we have picnic tables where you can have a group organization go down there, have a picnic, go out on kayaks, go out in canoes, maybe take a class. We have a zip line. So all those things can happen in a beautiful area. So that's one area we're really trying to to, to make a little nicer, we realized it's not right in the center of campus. And we were concerned that students wouldn't want to make the trip down there. Um, we have found that is not an issue at all. They love it. And now that they know where it is, they're down there all the time, just hanging out, studying, and just enjoying the beautiful area down there. So it's, it's, it's nice to have a kind of a, our own little lake on campus. <laughs> Informal recreation, this is a really important one to me and it always has been. I, I think as, and it's even happened more and more, as students come to us, they have been programmed and, and scheduled almost every hour of the day. And that's unfortunate. You just don't have time to just do what you wanna do or, or, or an hour to just relax or an hour to do anything because you got a schedule. Um, so it's really important for us for informal rec to keep spaces open in the rec center and on our outside facilities just for the students that want to go just do or play or be versus you got to join the intramural basketball league. Well, what if you just want to come play pickup basketball? So even when we have 80 intramural basketball teams, I, I, make, I make our assistant director leave one court open for free play at all times, because that's important. It's important for you all to be able to do that if that's what you want. And if you don't want to be in a structured league, you shouldn't have to. So we are, we are very, very um, committed to informal recreation and, and I hope that'll always continue. And murals, this is what we've been talking about. So, so intramurals is, to, to kind of give you an idea, we, we'll talk about intramurals and then we'll talk about sport clubs. Intramurals are basically playing within the institution. So one residence hall plays another residence hall or one floor plays another floor or one organization or a fraternity or sorority or a sport club will enter intramurals, you'll play another one, but everything is with students within the institution. So you're not playing anybody from any other schools. It's only William & Mary students. Um, and there's the team sports we have. We also have individual and dual sports and they are changing all the time. Like we know that this new game of spike ball is huge. Um, and so that we've added that as an intramural activity. You know, we, we try to find out what's really going, what's really important. Um, and we try to offer those, those for our students, either in the team sports or in the individual and dual sports. And we're always welcome. If, you, if there's something you just want to really, you, you think is the greatest thing since sliced bread, you just come see us and we'll see if we can get it into the, our schedule. All of our activities are, scheduled, are officiated by students and supervised by students. Um, so we don't let you yell and scream at them because that's not nice because they're your classmates. 
Um, but they, but it's, it's also a nice way to make some money and get to meet people. Most of the time when we talk to our you know, student workers that we ask them why they want to work here and they say it's because we get to meet so many neat people. We're around so many people we'd never meet anywhere else and they all come into the rec center. So that's, that's kind of good for us. It, make, it makes us feel pretty good about things. Sport clubs. Um, so this, so when you talk about sport clubs, they generally compete against other institutions. So um, most of them are in some kind of league or some kind of association. If they're not, they just, they set their own schedules up with other schools in Virginia or North Carolina. Um, some of our clubs like synchronized swimming, most of the tournament that they have to go to is in Ohio. So they go to Ohio State for a, a tournament. Our crew team will often travel as far up north as Boston. Um, and then as far south as oftentimes they'll go to a, a, a regatta in Tennessee or in Atlanta. Um, so it really is about what the, what the club wants to do. We, we help financially support our clubs. There are club dues with every single club that we have. There have to be because we can't, we can't completely um, cover all the costs for sport clubs. Some are much more expensive than others. I would think my, my most expensive one is crew. And that usually costs about, I want to say $1,500 a year. And that's scary and that's hard. But the good news is um, because the Board of Visitors, which is our governing body, supports our sport club program and believes in our sport club program so much, two years ago, they, they set up a fund and it's a financial fund just for sport clubs. So if you qualify for financial aid at the College of William & Mary, and you want to be on a sport club, you, you just have to fill out at you yourself. This isn't something your parents have to fill out or anything like that. That's all done. Once you've qualified for financial aid at the college, you fill this form out. It goes to financial aid. It doesn't come to me. And they send it back. And it said, they usually say 100% or 50%. And that means we can give you up to 100% of the cost of the club or 50% of the cost of the club. So for crew, if it's $1,500 and you qualify for 100, we try to give you 1,500. So it goes into, it doesn't come to you personally. It goes to the club, but then you no longer have to pay that money to be a part of the club. So that is, it's probably, we're probably one of the only schools in the country that has that. Um, but it was just that they really believed in what the, the value of sport clubs and the life skills that you get from sport clubs. And so they wanted to make it affordable for everybody. And that's just huge. Obviously, we have um, equestrian because you see our horses here. We have ballroom dance. Um, we have ice hockey. We have rugby's. We have ultimate frisbees. We have baseball. I mean, we, you think about it, we pretty much have everything. And I didn't list all 45 of them. Uh, you can just go on, you'll, you'll see our website at the end. You can go on there and find all of them. Um, obviously, this year has been difficult for our sport clubs because we haven't been able to compete with any of them. We have been allowed to let them practice. They just have to stay a certain distance apart. They have to wear their mask, but they, they're probably the most conditioned as they've ever been. Um, so they have still been able to form that bond and still have that camaraderie, even though they haven't been able to play uh, against other schools. So I don't know exactly how active every club's going to be in the fall because I don't know what what the, the COVID time has done to them. Um, the, all of our clubs are student run and student led. Now they so a lot of our clubs have coaches, and they and even some of them pay their coaches, but we still deal with the students because it's so important for us to you all to be able to get those leadership skills and be able to take that experience that you've had at a club sport, put it on your resume and help you help you as you as you leave William and Mary. And, and I can tell you that there have been numerous people that have come back and said, you know, they saw that I was the crew club president and they asked me about that. And they said, that's the reason they hired me. Um, and it's because it, you do get a lot of, of, of leadership experience. You get a lot of time management experience. Oftentimes, you, you know, if you're the treasurer, you get financial experience and budgeting experience. Um, we have safety officers. You get trained in CPR and first aid. So those are skills that you take with you. So there's a lot that comes along with sport clubs that, um, that the officers get that, that they use for forever. But the programs are very active and there's, you know, they're as active as the, as the club wants them to be. And we support that completely. 
I've got a person that works with them daily, and it's just a, it's a nice environment for them. Not, not everybody gets to practice on site. We don't have like a crew site on site, but we do have one where we've built a boathouse that they have that's about 15 minutes away. Ice hockey has to go about probably 20, 25 minutes away. We also have vans that we provide for people that need to get to and from practices and to and from events. So we, we try to make it as easy as possible for our, for our clubs. Tribe Adventure Program, that's our TAP program, um, which is our outdoor trips and events. And they go probably on two or three trips a weekend. Um, and students just sign up. There is occasionally a small fee with it, but it's very small. Um, you know, I think generally it's under 20 or $25 for the, for the whole weekend. And that includes food and equipment and whatever you might need and the vans to get there. Um, so it's, it is a very reasonable price. All, every one of our programs, you, if you went back, if you go back to our eight values of wellness or our eight levels, um, environmental is one of them. So every one of our programs is leave no trace. Every, when you go in and we go into the wilderness, we come out with everything we went in with. So it's really important that we protect the environment through everything we do. Um, but our TAP program is extremely, extremely popular. Um, programs fill up very quickly. All of, all of them are student, student led there also. Um, the occasional time we, we don't have somebody that's trained enough in the activity. The program is still student led, but we, we will partner with a outfitter that has that expertise in the area. Um, so that's, a, that's an important piece of what we do. That is one program that we have been able to continue to do all through COVID. Every Friday night, we go out and have campfires out in the woods led by our trip leaders. It's a great way for students who have been able to meet students from other residence halls in different areas that they wouldn't be able to do at this time of, uh, with, with, with COVID restrictions. Um, and then every Saturday night, we not only have a campfire, but we have a camp out where students are sleeping in hammocks out in the wilderness, out in our, in our woods, and they come back the next morning. And I mean, every, so it's, it, every program is filled up from now until May right now because it's, Students are, again, looking for things to do, and we've been able to provide that opportunity. Um, we've got some other stuff, too, that's coming up in a second. Uh, let's see. I think we do. Climbing wall. I'm kidding. Yeah, climbing wall. Um, we do still have, we do have a climbing wall. It has not been open this year because in our state, the, the, we have not been able to use the ropes, and we're certainly not going to let you climb it without them. So that's one area that we have not been able to open. And that's unfortunate because it is so popular. It gets a lot of use. Um, there's no experience necessary. We've got, we've got certified people there that can belay you and can teach you how to climb. You can learn to belay. So if you and your friend wants to come over and you can belay them, they can belay you. We usually do in the spring do some kind of competition where it's, you know, we, we, provide opportunities for people who are beginners, intermediates, and inexperienced. And we just, we, last year we called it this summit of 1693 because we were founded in 1693 at William & Mary. So we love traditions. And so that's what we call it. Um, I think I missed one thing. There we go. Challenge course in the boathouse. I thought I'd missed it. Um, the challenge course, we have a, a, a high and a low. Right now, the only one that is only open is the low ropes course. We are looking, and right before we got hit, we were about to hopefully put in a brand new high ropes course. Um, we might need another year to recover from, from some of the financial uh, impact of COVID at the college, but um, we will keep the low ropes course open and we hope to get the high ropes open within a year. Um, but it's, you know, it, groups and organizations will, will schedule and we'll, we'll put them through the ropes course and everything. And it's just a lot of fun for people. We have a boathouse where you can go out and you can kayak, you can canoe, you can paddleboard. Um, and it, again, it, we have that open seven days a week right now. And you have to sign up for time slots right now because we can only have a certain number at any given time, but they're filling up every, every hour we're open. Um, it's just a nice way to get to, to just relax. I um, mean, this is down in that whole beautiful area we were talking about before. We also have a zip line out there um, and that can be rented or, or scheduled. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of things we can do down in this area. Um, and it's just, I mean, it really is a nice, and that's the area we just want to do a little bit more to make it kind of a little bit more inclusive where you can 
drill out or do something along those lines. Um, we talked about climbing wall, and then we talked about pathways. Now, pathways is, is really important because you all would be incoming students. Um, pathways is our pre-orientation program that we take um, incoming students on, either freshmen or transfer students. Um, uh, I will tell you, every year it has filled up. We, you know, it's it. We do a. It's usually four days, so you go and you you do something for three days. The fourth night, we bring you back not on campus, but close to campus. We have a, um, it's a place called Chickahominy Park, which is where our rowing club sails out of. I mean, rail, no, they don't sail out of it, they row out of it. Um, and we come, everybody comes together and you, you kind of get to hear about everybody else's trips. You get to make friends. You know, the, I always joke with our Res Life program that, you know, we, we take you out in the wilderness and you're sleeping in tents and you're not taking showers and you're, you're tired and you're, it's the, the ground's hard and you come back to the residence halls and they look better all of a sudden. But that's, uh, that's our little joke with Res, 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 with res Life. Um, but it, it really is a great experience. And we, we have, I mean, people make friends for life out of this program. 90% of our trip leaders come from our Pathways program because they do it and they just fall in love with it and they go, wow, I want, I want to do that for others. So that's where we get most of our trip leaders from. Um, give it to you here. Uh, where's my next pathway slide? Um, so you don't really have to have any experience. There are some that probably um, require a little bit more stamina, but we tell you that on there. Some of them don't require any at all, and they certainly don't require any, you know, how you don't have to know how to put a tent together or anything like that. We'll help with all those things. Um, but it's, 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 it, before school starts, it's a nice way to make friends and also get to talk to our trip leaders that can kind of tell you what that first couple couple weeks of school is going to feel like. I mean, you're basically, if you've never done outdoors, you're going to be out in the wilderness doing something you've never done before. It might feel a little uncomfortable to you, but you're making friends. You know, it's just you're not really sure how to handle it. That's pretty much your first couple weeks at any college. So it's a great way to kind of get yourself acclimated a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and trip leaders keep in touch with you, you know, through, through maybe your whole career here, as long as they're here. Um, so that's, that's one part that's really exciting for us. And, and they do fill up, you know, there's hiking, we do some biking trips, we do some water trips. <clears throat> A couple of our water trips are like one of one day you'll do stand up paddleboard, the next day you may go kayaking. Um, but we'll get you, we, we get you all that information. Because this is our normal, this is what we normally do. So this will give you an idea what our normal trips look like. I have no idea what fall is going to look like. Um, I would love to tell you we're going to do all of these. I certainly can't tell you that. I can't tell you what tomorrow is going to look like. <clears throat> but this is our hope. We are being told we're going to be able to do pathways. Worst case scenario, I think we'll still be able to do pathways. We may just have to stay on campus. Our hope is we don't have to do that. When I say that, I'm not talking about staying at your residence hall. I'm talking about staying out in the wilderness where we don't have to get you in a van for a couple hours. <clears throat> so we will be doing something like that. There is an interest form here. It's because we don't have a lot of information on it yet, and I, I will tell you the cost is generally, I mean, it's certainly under, I think we usually keep it under like $160 or something for everything. That's four days of every, I mean, it includes equipment, includes food, includes everything, includes a, a nice, beautiful, long sleeve t-shirt that only Pathways participants get. Um, but because we don't have enough information, what we've done is we put out an, an interest form. So if that is something you might be interested in, go ahead and fill out that interest form. And what we'll do is when we do have better information from administration above, we will then email all of you and tell you, hey, this is what we're going to be able to do. This is what it's going to cost. Sign up if you want to. So that's just a little bit about um, the Pathways program, but that is only for <clears throat> incoming in new students. So, um, so now I'll just open it up to questions. I'm going to take a little sip of something here so I don't keep um, kind of coughing in your ear. So questions, let's see. Um, Kristen, have you seen any of them? I don't have them open, so. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
it looks like we have the most amount of questions are relating to uh, what programs and which recreation locations are available to students for free or would be included in that tuition? Um, all. So the rec center, the wellness center. So I say it's free. We say it's free, but it's not free. I mean, it's free. You, your parents are paying. <clears throat> you pay, you pay tuition and you also pay an, a, um, a student fee. Part of that student fee comes to campus recreation and that gets you access to the rec center, gets you access to the wellness center, gets you access to a dare, gets you access to all the fields. So all the, all the facilities are free. Some of the, and, and many of the programs are free. Some of them charge a little bit of money because we have to, <clears throat> but for the most part, they are all, all the facilities are free. So um, some other questions that we're getting here and maybe we kind of touched on this one with that by the numbers page, uh, but how crowded would you say the recreation center gets usually in a, a non-COVID year? Is it hard to find, uh, say, treadmills or are there usually ones open? You know, I used to say you could always get on a piece of equipment. It may not be a treadmill. You may have to get on an elliptical or you may have to get on a um, erg, but you can always find a piece of equipment. I can't say that anymore. Generally from like four to six, it's packed. It's just packed. <clears throat> but if you come in during the day or early morning, no problem at all. It's usually just a two hour window that is just, I mean, which I love because the energy is just amazing, but it is, it does get pretty, pretty crowded. That's why we're, we're really excited about the dare because if we get that, then that pretty much doubles our space and we'll be able to provide a lot more opportunities. Gotcha. <clears throat> Um, and thank you for whoever asked that. Uh, next one, it looks like, and I think I, I might be actually able to answer this one. Um, will William and Mary be all in person for the upcoming academic year? Uh, and Linda's touched on this. We, we really don't know yet. We're still being advised by campus leadership, by the state government, federal government, you know, a whole different uh, ball game there. But we're hoping at the very least we'll be able to continue with our hybrid programs that we've been doing for this past academic year. Um, but stay tuned. We're, we're trying our best and fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything crossed. It'll be a traditional normal year, um, but it is too early to say for those. Um, and I, will, I will say that that is the intent. Right now, the intent is for us to be open. I mean, we're open every day anyway from a recreational standpoint. So, um, but, but it's, it's harder to get in because we have to limit the numbers. We are hoping in the fall that we don't. I can't guarantee that, but that is the in, that is the hope. And if things keep moving with the number of people getting vaccinated and those kind of things, <clears throat> that is our that is 100% our intent. But it but we just don't know. This thing could take a turn tomorrow or a week from now and have something, you know, that none of our none of our vaccinations or anything can really deal with we just don't know i don't think that's going to happen and i go and i know the university's intent is to kind of keep it you know everything virtual over the summer to allow us to get ready for an opening in the fall that would be and what, what is normal nobody knows what normal is going to be you know i mean I, I hope that we don't go back to normal i hope that we've learned from this and that some of the stuff that we're doing outside or some of the things, you know, we have a, we were able to get a virtual wellness program up within 48 hours of having to shut down. So we had classes online that you could take anytime you wanted. You could just go onto our YouTube channel and do a yoga class or do a body pump class or do a this class or that class. And you could do it within 48 hours of us shutting down that was really beneficial for some people who didn't feel comfortable exercising in front of other people or, or, you know, for whatever reason, didn't, didn't want to come into a rec center. So I hope we still continue to do those, but that we also provide a robust in-person program. Um, we just have to figure out how to navigate both of those and may and kind of meet the needs of, you know, I get really excited that we have 82% of the students that participate in our program, but that also tells me 18% don't. So I'm missing 18% of the students that I want to reach. Um, maybe I can reach a few of those through virtual programs or through some things that aren't aren't quite for the for the non-person, non-exerciser that don't seem quite as, as threatening. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, 
So we're getting a, a couple of questions here about uh, where to find more information on things. Uh, and on that one, I'll say, if you don't mind, just please pause for that on now. Uh, after we kind of wrap up the q and I'll be putting a, a bunch of different links down in that chat box. Uh, and that'll be to multiple campus, campus recreations. Um, so, so hold on for those. Uh, and oh, that yeah. the link for the pathways form <laughs> and all of those things. Um, Someone else asked, uh, the Pathways Interest Form looks to require a W and M email. Is there any way to complete it without one? Um, I think you have to get that first because we want we don't want we don't want you to sign up as an interest form and then decide that you want to go to to Duke. Um, so you know we just want to make sure that you're actually going to be a student here, and as soon as you commit to that, you get a William and Mary email address immediately. So you'll have no problem with that, and we will not um, we will not open registration up until you know until people have made decisions. So until until that decision date, we would not open up registration before that because we think that's important that everybody has a chance to to join it. So yeah, you probably do have to wait for that William and Mary um, email, but it will come is pretty soon after you commit to the university. <laughs> and don't worry, everyone, I will be putting a link back and deposit page so you can do that today. <laughs> um, our next question and this one might be a short one but what kind of golf opportunities are there and is there a non-competitive golf club there's not a well yes and no there we have a golf club and so so my philosophy for sport clubs and and i'm fortunate that our clubs will at least sort of buy into it for me but i think if you want to be on a sport club you should be allowed to um, so all of our sport clubs we don't allow cuts. We do allow them to have traveling teams from their clubs. So say for golf, we have a golf club. We have a sport club that's golf. If you don't want to be competitive, then you don't, you wouldn't be on the traveling golf club, but you could still go out and play golf with the golf club on their, on their kind of their home events or whatever. So, I mean, on their, on their practice time. So all of our clubs have an aspect for, of it. So uh, volleyball is a great example. We have an A, B, and C in volleyball, women's volleyball clubs. The A team is the most competitive, and the, and the C team is the one that doesn't really – I mean, they go and play in a local league in James City County, and that's what they want to do, and they love it, and that's, that's perfect for them. So we allow the clubs to kind of navigate that a little bit. But, you know, if you want to be on a club, I think because you pay student fees and because we support the clubs with some of the student fees you pay – that you should be able to do that. Awesome. Let's see. I, maybe really quickly, um, if you could list uh, what different dance opportunities, uh, specifically this person asked the low key dance opportunity. Wow, and that's a good question because I don't have the answer to that necessarily. Only one of them falls under campus recreation sport clubs and that is the ballroom dance club. And that was grandfathered in pretty much 20 some years ago. Most of the dance clubs are just student, or, not just, but are student organizations. They are not, they don't fall under the campus recreation umbrella. So, but I do know there are probably upwards of 20 different dance organizations. We have, you know, the Bakra dance club, we have the swing dance club, we have the, I think we actually have a separate ballroom dance club that is not a club, a sport club that's not the competitive one. I mean, there are there are more dance clubs than than you can imagine. And we also offer dance courses. And I know they do the um, one of the big dance athons every year that a lot of students participate in for the. I think it's usually CHKD, the the Children's Hospital. Um, so I think that we have that also. So there's plenty, a lot of opportunities for dance. Just one of them falls under sport clubs, and the rest are under student organizations. And yeah, I can attest to that as well. We have over 500 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in from dance to, you know, like uh, Linda said, the sports clubs all the way down to the Slytherin house or whatever you Guys, want. We have a cheese club. Now I got to tell you, I want to join the cheese club because I love cheese and there's got to be something good about going and having cheese together. But we do. <laughs> have a club. So there, I mean, there, if, if there's, if you want to be a student organization, you just go through our student activities office and we can get you set up to do that. Awesome. And you know what? I think that might be a good place to end it, right? With the cheese club. Um, but no, with that being said, I have put a bunch of different links down into that chat box down below. So hopefully you all got those. Um, the first is to our campus recreation website. The second is to your pathways interest form. 
uh, for after you've enrolled at William and Mary. Uh, the next one is about admitted student programs. So if you want to learn more about different aspects of William and Mary, uh, you're more than welcome to do so through registering for those events. And then finally, put in your uh, activate and deposit page so that if you've decided this was the tipping point, you're now ready to decide uh, William and Mary is where you want to be, please go there and we'd be more than happy to uh, welcome you to the tribe community. Um, I want to thank Linda again for spending her afternoon and her evening with us and I want to thank you all for spending your time with us. Um, if you have any other questions or concerns, please feel free to email us admission at wm.edu and we can make sure that either if we don't know the answer, we can it to the appropriate person. Uh, and I, yeah, Christian, I see some of these and I know we got to get off because you got to get to your next one, but there's some questions we didn't get a chance to answer. Please reach out to me. I am ha I will be happy to respond to you um, with, every, with all the questions you have here. If you go to the campus rec page, you can find my email right there. Um, and I will be more than happy to say, hey, I was on your session. My question didn't get answered. Can you answer this? And I will be more than happy to do that and um, would, would welcome to do that for you. Well, thank you very much again. And thank you to all of our students. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend. And fingers crossed, we'll see you on campus soon. Uh, but have a great night, If you everyone. come, welcome, everyone. Thank you.